Now that we understand how firms in competitive markets maximize profit, and we've introduced the concept of the shutdown condition, we're ready to talk about how to drive the supply curve both for an individual firm in a competitive market and also for a competitive market overall. So let's start with an individual firm and see what happens and then build up the market supply curve from there. So on the right here, I've drawn, well, I haven't drawn a supply curve yet, but I've drawn the framework for a supply curve, which as you recall, is just the relationship between the market price and quantity supplied. So we're gonna think about as we vary our market price, which our individual firm takes as given, we're gonna ask at each one of these prices, how much output does this firm want to produce? And that's gonna come from the graph that you see on the left here, which is just the cost curves that we've been talking about that are representative of an individual firm. So the relative cost curves that we can look at are marginal cost, average total cost, and average variable cost. So let's start by thinking about a very low hypothetical price, and let's think about what happens to the quantity that the firm wants to supply as we keep increasing that price. So at a price that's very low all the way down here, the firm actually isn't going to want to produce any output because we said the shutdown condition states that if the price is below the minimum of average variable cost, the firm is going to want to shut down and produce zero. So we can see for all prices up until this point, this minimum of average variable cost, let's call this P1 star. If we carried this over here, at all of these prices, this firm is going to want to produce a quantity of zero. So our supply curve would be a bunch of points that are just something like this. Then we can ask ourselves, once we hit this threshold and we're overcoming the shutdown condition and making the firm actually want to produce stuff, how much are they going to want to produce? So at this price, P1 star, Remember, we said profit is maximized where price is equal to marginal cost. So with this P1 star, our firm is going to want to produce, I'll just call this Q1 star. And then I'll label this same Q1 star over here on our supply curve. Oh, let's say it's about here. That looks about right. So once we hit this price, our output jumps from zero, which is what it was before, to this Q1 star. Now we can think about what happens as our price continues to increase. We said before qualitatively that as our price increases, we're going to be producing more and more output, but let's just show how we can make that happen graphically also. So let's consider we have a point P2 that's somewhere here. So let's say the market price is at this P2 star. Again, the firm is going to set quantity such that price is equal to marginal cost. So it's going to set this quantity Q2 star here. Again, I'll note that over here, Q2 star Looks like it's about here. And P2 star is up here. So our next point on our supply curve is about here. We can do another one. Let's say now we're at the bottom of our average total cost curve. Maybe call this guy P3 star. Well now price equals marginal cost. Out here, call this guy Q3 star. Again, let's superimpose him over here on our supply curve. We'll say, okay, this price here, we're gonna be producing a quantity Q3 star, which is about here. So our next point's gonna be here. 
And we could keep doing this for every possible price. And what you would see is that we're tracing out a supply curve that looks something like this. Now, despite that this graph isn't drawn perfectly to scale, I hope it's at least somewhat occurred to you that, hey, this part of the supply curve looks a lot like this marginal cost curve that we see over here. Because the three points that we outlined on the marginal cost curve were P1 star, Q1 star, P2 star, Q2 star, and P3 star, Q3 star. Similarly, the three points we outlined on our supply curve were P1 star, Q1 star, P2 star, Q2 star, and P3 star, Q3 star. You're like, oh, hey, wait a minute, this is just the same thing. So what we see actually is that our supply curve here, let's call this S, is actually just a truncated version of our marginal cost curve. That we can see here that our supply curve where we're producing positive quantities is just the part of the marginal cost curve that lies above the minimum of average variable cost. So we can say that supply is equal to marginal cost above our minimum of average variable cost. So what seemed like initially something that was pretty complicated to derive saying, oh, this is actually just the same as part of our marginal cost curve. It's actually pretty easy. As we said when we first introduced the concept of supply, market supply is just the sum of all the supplies of the individual firms that make up the market. So we can think about market supply just being an aggregation of all these different individual supply curves that we see. Now, it might not always be the case that all of the firms in a market are identical, meaning that all of them face the same cost curves and therefore the same supply curve. But let's think about a very simple case where that is in fact true. We can think about in a market that has, let's say, 100 firms in the market, how we can go from individual supply to market supply. So. Here we can just think about what market supply is going to look like at each given price. So at a price of 1, each firm is still shut down. So each firm is producing 0 units. So at a price of 1, the entire market is going to be producing 0 units. You can say that our point on our market supply curve is just here at a quantity of 0. Now we notice here at a price of 2, each firm is producing one unit. So if each firm is producing one unit and there are 100 firms, then the total market supply is, not surprisingly, 100 units. So we can put that out here somewhere. We can say we have a point on our supply curve that looks like this. At a price of 3, we see that each firm is producing 3 units. So if each firm is producing 3 units and there are 100 firms, we have 300 units produced in the market. We can put 300 out here somewhere, and we get another point on our market supply curve. At a price of 4, each firm is producing 5 units, so the market's just producing 5 times 100, or 500 units. We can put that guy out here. And at a price of 5, each firm is producing 7 units. So then our market supply is just 7 times 100, or 700. Put that guy out here. And we could do this for all the prices in between to actually show how we can aggregate up from the individual supply curve to the market supply curve.
What you want to remember here is if no individual firms are producing until the price hits two, we're similarly not going to get any market supply until the price hits two. We can also look at how to aggregate up market supply from individual supply algebraically rather than graphically. So intuitively speaking, because we said that all of our firms in our market were identical, we can just say that our market supply, which is represented by our capital Q sub S, is just equal to 100 times what any individual firm is producing, which we refer to as little Q sub S for individual firm supply. So I took the liberty of figuring out what an equation for the individual firm supply curve might look like. And I get that little q sub s is equal to negative 3 plus 2p for p greater than or equal to 2. Because we have to stipulate if p is less than 2, then our supply is in fact 0. And you'll notice that this equation corresponds to the points that we graphed on our supply curve here. So given that this is the case, then our big Q sub S is just going to be 100 times this thing. So just 100 times negative 3 plus 2P, which gives you that our market supply, our capital Q sub S, is equal to negative 300 plus 200P for, of course, P greater than or equal to 2. And of course, for P less than 2, we would also have a market supply of zero. While it is true that we can always aggregate up market supply by adding up all the individual firm supplies at each given price, it gets a little bit complicated when not all of the firms share the same cost structures because then you can't just simply multiply the individual supply by the number of firms that you have in the market. In those sorts of cases, in order to aggregate up market supply from individual firm supplies, you want to use a method similar to what we talked about when aggregating up individual to market demand when we discussed the concept of horizontal addition. In conclusion, we can find the individual firm supply curve for a firm in a competitive market by just looking at that firm's marginal cost curve and then taking as a supply curve the part of the marginal cost curve that lies above the minimum of the average variable cost curve. Furthermore, we can find market supply by just at each individual price adding up the individual firm supplies for each firm in the market. One final thing to keep in mind is that this supply curve that we've been deriving either for the individual firm or for the market represents the firm's short-run supply curve. And what we're going to see is when we consider the market's long-run supply curve, we're going to get something that looks quite different. So it's important to understand the distinction between the two.